Hey guys, let's try something different here. We're out in the garage with the CNC machine. We have our controller all wired up and powered. And let's plug the USB port in for the first time. You can hear Windows detect that. Uh, it'll install some drivers the very first time you plug it in. Uh, so we fire up Mac 3. Now I have a profile here. We're not going to use that. We're going to create a new profile. We're going to call it Screencast. And let's just go for some default values. Okay. Agree to the terms and conditions. Okay, once this fires up, the first thing I need to do due to the resolution I'm running is go into general configuration and we're going to set high res screens. Okay, back to config, save our settings. We're going to close and restart. That's better. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is run through some of the general configuration. Tool changes, uh, I'm going to set mine to stop the spindle. We don't have an automatic tool changer. We're going to leave these ones here. Again, defaults are fine here. Defaults are fine. We don't need to worry about our serial output because we're going to be using the USB driver as well as the uh, Novo Sun plugin about this. Don't need to change our editor. Again we can leave all that default. Okay this one here is going to be important with our machine. Home slave with master access. Uh, I see a lot of people saying uh, why is my y-axis motor moving but my a not. This one here is important once you've figured that out, to make them home together. Yep, I believe the rest of these we can leave as they are. Okay, let's do our ports and pins configuration. Okay, in this screen here, we don't need to change anything. Defaults are fine. Here, we're going to set our motor outputs. Now these might be slightly different for you, um, but I should be able to point out what you need to change. We need to enable our X axis, our Y, Z, and A. Step pins don't matter with the USB controller. The DER pin doesn't matter with the USB controller. Now these do, so this is gonna change the direction the motor is going to move. Uh, for my setup, I need to leave the first two as they are. And I need to check my z-axis. My A also needs to be left alone. Now step low active. I need to change these on all of mine. Now step port. We want to set this to 1 on all. And our dirt port also needs to be set to 1. Don't know exactly why this is, but that's what you want to do with the USB controller. Now I'm going to control my spindle at one point, so I might as well turn these on now. I'm going to apply those settings and move on to input signals. Our input signals are used for our uh, limit switches if we have them or our homing switch if we want to use that. I'm using a homing switch so I need to enable my X home, Y home and Z home. Uh, we're going to set ports for these. So the port should be 1 on all of these. Now our pins, this is where we need to figure it out. Because when I connected my end stops, I pretty much just picked any input pin and I didn't want to go through tracing the wires, but there's a method we can go through to find out what these are. So I'm going to set some numbers in here um, that I've already tested, but I'll show you how to test these. So we're going to set 5, 3, and 4. That order can change. So we can go and adjust that once we've tested our end stops. Scrolling down here, we want to enable our e-stop and possibly our probe, depending on how you're setting up. So probe, I'm going to enable um, port one for that guy and pin number two. And we'll worry 
about these guys later when we're setting it up. Now our end stop, we want to enable that. We're going to be on port 1 and we're on pin 1 for that guy. We don't have an encoder. We're going to apply those. Our output signals, we can leave these disabled. Encoder, we can leave all these disabled as we don't have one. Onto spindle setup. We're going to enable our spindle relays as we're actually going to use those. Uh, in my case, the outputs need to be 1 and 2. Uh, don't have any flood or miss coolant, so we're going to leave those alone. Don't need to worry about any changes over here. Use spindle motor output, we need that one. And we're going to set up PWM control. Our PWM base frequency I've been using that's working is 20. Not worrying about anything here. Clockwise spin delay. This is how long the program will pause after it tells the spindle to start. Let's set these at 20 until we can test and tune them lower. Now you can turn this one. This will just basically tell the controller to just send zero to the spindle and turn it off immediately, not try and ramp it down slowly. And that's what we need to change in here. Let's check mill options. There's nothing in here that we need to change, so we're going to go OK. Back into configuration. We'll move on to motor tuning. I'm going to give you some default settings that I've used here that work. For a stepper driver running 1 8 stepping and a lead screw from Bulkman, which has an 8mm pitch, you want to have your steps per millimeter at 100 until you calibrate. Velocity for the x-axis will start at 4,000 millimeters per minute. Acceleration will use 200 millimeters a second. And pulses for step and dir should be 5. Save these and move on to the y-axis. We're going to go for a 100 steps per millimeter. Velocity, we're going to go for 3,500 here, and acceleration 200 millimeters a second again. Step pulse, dirt pulse, both five again. Save and move on to the Z axis. 100 steps per millimeter again. Velocity 5,000, we can move this one quite fast. Acceleration 200 again, and five and five again. Save settings. Now let's move on to the A-axis. A-axis, we need to make sure we've duplicated what we have in the Y-axis. And save these settings. Just verify everything looks normal. And OK. OK, the next thing, because I've been configuring everything in here in millimeters, we're going to go and make sure that we're set on millimeters. Over to the Settings tab, you can see we're set on millimeters here. Back to our program page. Okay, one other thing that we need to do to make sure that we have our y-axis and our a-axis moving together is we need to slave them. For that, we go into configuration. Slave axis. On our y-axis, we want to slave it to our a-axis. Hit OK. We need to save this. So configuration, save settings, and close Mac 3. The next thing we need to do is we need to give the Mac 3 the ability to communicate with the Novo Sun NVUM controller. This is the file I needed to use. Uh, this is the plugin that's going to allow that. There were three other files of which the other two did not work. So we're going to copy this. We're going to move to our Mac3 directory, which for me is C drive Mac3. We're looking for the plugins folder. And then we're going to paste this file into here. Once we've done that, we can close out, load up Mac3 again, select our profile. Now we're going to be prompted what port we want to use. In this case, we want to select our Novo Sun. I don't want it to ask me again because this is the one I always want to use. And we'll start it up. Okay, now I believe everything should be ready to go for our first test. So if we come out of reset here. Now I'm just going to use the keyboard here. And we're going to go X positive And X negative. Let's go Y positive. Y negative, 
and our page up and down keys for Z negative and Z positive. And we have movement. The next thing we want to do is configure up our and stops. Because of the way I have my machine set, and in the back corner, I have one end stop. On the far right, I have one end stop, and the normal on the Z at its maximum height, I have another end stop. My end stops might be slightly different to yours, but I'm going to show you how I go about uh, detecting which end stop is connected into which port so that we can fix them up if they're wrong. First off, we're going to move over to our diagnostic screen. On here, we can see that we have our limit switches and our home switches. Because we configured them as home switches, we should have M1, M2, and M3. And the way to find out if these are correct is, let's bring the machine closer. Let's test our Z axis. Okay, you can see M3 is firing up here. A third is actually Z, so we're correct on our Z axis. Let's test our X axis. Okay, X, we have M1, and that's our X. The last thing to test, so that we can stay sitting over here, this would be our Y end stop. And you can see we're activating the M2 home. So all our end stops are configured correctly. If you have a problem here, what you need to do is go into your configuration, ports and pins, input signals, and these ports here refer to the switches. So if we wanted to swap our X and Y, let's change this to a three, this to a five, apply. Now we'll see. Now we're getting motor one for our X. We deactivate that and we test the motor two, which is our Y, we're getting when we press our Z axis end stop. So let's switch that back. Input signals, back to five, back to three, apply, okay. Let's test them again. Let's press our X end stop, motor one. Let's press our Y end stop. Motor 2 and just check our Z again. Motor 3. So because we have all of those working, we should test our emergency stop switch. Let's press that. There we go. We have our emergency light come on. So now we know that that's working. Let's move across to our program run. We're going to get ready to do a reference all, which is going to home. Actually, sorry, before we do that, we need to configure our home switches. Let's go into configuration, homing and limits. It's important here to have your machine somewhat central so that you've got time to press your end stop if you need to. But let's configure these up. So I don't need to have mine reversed because of the direction I'm moving. Uh, I'm not going to do my um, soft limits just yet. We'll change our slow zone to about 10, which is going to be 10 millimeters, one centimeter. I might up this later. Home offsets, I don't need any. We want to home in the negative direction on all of our axis and we want to auto zero when we hit there we're going to leave our speed at 20 percent so that means our home is going to be relatively slow uh, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and home and then we're going to hit our emergency switch uh, just to make sure everything's moving in the correct direction one thing you can do here as well is actually fire off your end stops to simulate what the machine would do just be careful if you're putting your fingers in the way of where the machine's going to travel to it won't stop Another note, sometimes these changes won't take effect and you will need to restart Mac 3. So let's just do that in case. Let's come out of reset, make sure we got movement. Okay, all axis moving. All right, so the first thing is gonna home is our Z axis. So let's move that down. It's going to give me time to activate it by hand. We can actually go across to our settings page, sorry, our diagnostics page. We can reference a single axis just to test. So let's do our Z axis. There we go. As I hit the end stop, it stops and reverses as soon as we release that end stop. That's where it finds its home. Okay, let's do our X axis. 
again, that's working correctly. And we'll do our Y axis. There we go, that's working correctly as well. Okay, let's move closer to our end stop so we don't have to have this run at 20% speed the whole way there. Okay, and let's do a reference all on the program screen. Okay, so that worked fine. Thanks again for watching. Now that we've completed the software portion, we can move on to using this machine. Please like and subscribe if you haven't, and see you again real soon.